everyone out there on YouTube. Welcome to the Eugene Torto YouTube channel. I hope everyone's having a good day. I want to thank everyone that subscribed so far, and I hope more people subscribe. You can do that by going down there and pressing the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, today's video will be on chip burning. Uh, this will be uh, my only chip burning experience is with my 90 Corvette. This is for chip burning on OBD1 vehicles like my 90 Corvette. This is just going to be a quick and dirty uh, way to get started in it. And uh, I also will leave a link up here how to get started in data logging. Uh, and I'm just going to go over a quick few things. I hope uh, I hope I get this right this time. It's like the fourth time I'm trying to make this video. But uh, one thing you will need is a chip burner. The only one I have experience with is this one from uh, Motesnet. It's called a Burn 2. I can say that I've had absolutely zero problems with this. You plug it in and connect and you're good. Uh, another thing you're going to need is a chip, the appropriate chip. Uh, you can use a modified memcal that where you take a factory memcal I'll go over that a little bit more and you mount that chip into the memcal uh, if you have the chip you will need an adapter for your ECU mine is out in the car uh, I will leave a link in the description boxes for all the resources Motesnet will have uh, all the information you need or should have all the information you need uh, as far as what adapters you'll need and so forth for your particular vehicle. Now, uh, one thing you want to know is, say uh, you have a factory memcal like this one. These were UV burnt, literally burnt, using UV light. As hard as that is to believe with today's technology, that's how they did it back then. And that's where the term burning new chips came from. Now, you could still go out there and get, use the stock memcal, get a uh, UV, uh, one of these UV chip erasers that basically is a little box. You stick this in and it shines UV light on it. I think it takes like eight hours to erase it and eight hours to burn one. And a UV burner. Uh, if you want to learn that, I'm sure you could Google it and uh, or go to the Furums and they'll teach you. I after what I've learned about them, I prefer to just stay far away from them because it takes forever to do anything. And uh, it's so easy to mess up a chip. And uh, in my opinion, if you have a factory memcal, uh, you don't ever want to lose that because that has the, ba the basic information. That's the factory information for running your vehicle. Like this one here, uh, I believe it's from a v GM V6. Uh, that will have a broadcast code. You could Google that broadcast code, and it'll probably tell you. And uh, and I also have my factory one from my '90 Corvette. I got it inside this mess here somewhere. But uh, anyway, get back to burning chips. Uh, order your appropriate chip. You're going to need the burner, and you're going to need software. There's a bunch of different software out there. I use Tuner Pro, and uh, which is Windows based. Uh, I could use ALD Droid. I've never used it and the reason, main reason I never used it is my phone doesn't support USB devices. Uh, I have to do it via Bluetooth and I don't have a Bluetooth USB burner. So for these purposes I'm going to use my home PC. Uh, so this way I can bring it up here on my big TV here and uh, hopefully it'll be better for you guys. But uh, you also need a software. You can get Tuner Pro free and you can get Flash and Burn free. Flash and Burn is basically Tuner Pro is is basically this window here for just burning without Tuner Pro. It's basically it's the exact same thing as this window. But to get back to the quick and dirty of burning, you will take your Burn 2 plug it into your computer or if you're using a tablet like I use this for data logging and uh, making changes to the tune and burning or uh, use your home PC if you're just uh, for burning and you obviously would be pretty difficult to data log fit a whole home PC in your car that uh, 
take your information from your data log and you make changes to your bin file and then you burn it. Uh, bin file is the file that will be inside your stock memcal. I'll show you here shortly how to get that. Uh, but let's get back to this. I'll close this out just to make it a little better. Now uh, there's two ways you can do it. You can plug this in and open up Tuner Pro and it will automatically connect. If you already have Tuner Pro open and it's plugged in, you will just go to Tuner Pro. So Tuner Pro is something you're going to have to learn if you want to burn your own chips. You just got to get out there and do it. And uh, just go to Initiate Emulation Hardware. Click on that. Uh, hopefully you guys heard that beep. That lets you know you're connected. And Hardware Flash and Burn down here comes up. And it's ready. Go to Tools, go to Hardware Utilities, hopefully you guys can see all that. Go to Motesprom IO, click on that, and there you go. Now this is, in my opinion, it isn't hard, it's just that you got to do a little research for the chip you're using. If you're watching your video, you should be able to use the same info I have here. For this, if you're using a 27SF512 chip, which I, I'm using for my 90 Corvette, uh, and you will have to enter these chip address and buffer addresses in here. And that being said, you'll need that to burn the chip. And this little piece here that I have connected to the memcal just plugs right in, plugs into the one end of the chip. And that is for, so you can read either the modified memcal that has the uh, modified chip in it, or the factory memcal. Now, as soon as I learned to do this, I took my factory memcal and downloaded it, plugged it into the uh, Motsnet Burn 2, and I downloaded it the bin file, that's what they refer to the file that's in here, that's what runs your computer, onto my hard drive to save for prosperity in case I ever lose it or need to burn a chip. And if you're starting from scratch, you're gonna that's what you're going to use to basically uh, make changes to your program, make changes to your timing, your fueling, uh, your rev limiter, any, any, anything, anything that can be changed inside the chip on the chip for your vehicle particular vehicle of course different vehicles will vary uh, but basically this header adapter just plugs right in to the one end where the chip if you look here on this memcal hopefully you can see that like this is the factory uh, UV chip and this is the modified chip. This chip and that chip are the same. It's just inside here. But basically, you want to take that, plug that header into the last very end there, drop it in into the slot so the last pin on that header is all the way back. And then you just pop that lever down. That locks it in place. And now you're ready to read that chip. So let's go. Let's read the chip. Let's see. There is five. Say buffer. Load file to buffer. Edit buffer. First, you need to save buffer to file. That will be the bin file that's on there. Click on save bin. Make up a name. Uh, pick the file you want to save it to. Name it Y. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to YXZ and save. It already exists. Yeah, I already have it on there, so yes. There it is. Now, if you want to edit the buffer, you can do, and you know hex. God bless you if you know hex. I don't have the slightest idea how to use that. I use uh, Tuner, Fro, Tuner Pro to make uh, changes to the bin file. And here it is, all the hex. Uh, I'll try and do a, a video on making changes to your bin file and what you need there are there are other videos out there like if you want to learn this stuff you're gonna have to 
learn. I will leave links below to uh, EFI Furum and uh, Gearhead EFI Furum and uh, Third Gen Org. They're, in my opinion, when it comes to the OBD1 and the older uh, EFI systems, that's the place to go. Uh, for GM vehicles, Third Gen Org is great, and for GM vehicles and every other vehicle from that era, EFI Gearhead EFI Furum is uh, great. Uh, just keep in mind it may take a while for someone to respond if you have questions. But, anyway, getting back to this. I am going to remove this chip. Try to, one-handedly. And, when you get your chip, depending on the type of chip you have, hopefully you can see this. It'll have, like this chip here, has a little notch in it. That has to be pointed in the correct direction. Hopefully you can see that. And in this case, it goes all the way back. So, so the last pin on this is in the last slot. And that little notch is closing to this little chrome lever. Pop that lever down, locked in place. We'll uh, MEC. We'll first erase that chip. The erasing device, erase succeeded. Hopefully you can see that. And what the heck, we'll do a blank check. And that's going to check it. And you can see here this little light flashing, let you know it's working. And there it goes. Checking for blank device. Chip is blank. And uh, now we'll load a file to buffer. This will be the new or modified, uh, in this case I'll use a modified version of VIN file, and I will go, let's see, which one should I check just for laughs, I got a bunch of them here, I'll do this one here, this would be for a 90 Corvette Auto with 307 gears, click on that, open it up, and it gives the, some information down here on it. And then I will program the chip. There it goes. Just basically copying your modified bin file onto that chip. And then if you want, you can do a verify chip with buffer. And it does that. And verifying device against buffer, success, verification, succeed it. Okay, so that's programmed. Basically, you're ready to put that chip in the car and uh, hook up your data logger and go out and test it out and see if you like it or not. Uh, that is the short and sweet of it. Uh, like I said, for the other, uh, for like modifying your bin, you will need a uh, program, unless it is Tuner Pro. Tuner Pro is free. And, uh, like I said, there's a learning curve. You just got to be willing to do it. I'm, a, I'm an older guy, and I learned it. So I'm, I would think the younger guys out there should be able to do it, younger guys and gals. Uh, but the, here, I'll give you a quick, a quick and dirty idea. Okay, let's go to Spark Advance Main. There's the Spark Advance ta table. I would make changes to this table. Save it. This is the bin file. There's actually three files you need. Uh, bin file. Actually, all you need is the bin file and the XDF file. Uh, those you have to find for your particular vehicle. Uh, like I said, you go to those two forums and those guys can usually help you. Or you just search Google. That's the quickest way. Always search Google first. If you can't find what you're looking for, then go to the forums. That's my advice anyway. And you can make modify it. Uh, different changes and uh, whatnot any changes you need to let's see here if I can bring up this oh there it is over on the other monitor there we go and graphs and all that other stuff that are that there are tools for making changes and you may make your changes to your spark table you can save it, go to your uh, fueling tables.
my mix efficiency tables. You can make changes to that. And uh, you have a chart to help you, and you can, that comes real helpful when you smooth it out. That's something, if you're going to get into tuning and burn your own chips, you're going to have to learn. Uh, but uh, this is it, the short and dirty of it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave comments below. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe at the notification bell. I hope this helps you get started. I am... By no means an authority on this, there are other people out there uh, that are, know much more about this than I ever will. But uh, if I can do basic changes to the bin file, like fuel and spark, and burn my own chips, I'm sure you, most there's a lot of other people out there that can do it. If not, then there's a lot of resources out there that can get it done for you. So... Uh, if you're interested in modifying your uh, older OBD-1 vehicle where you need to burn chips, uh, I hope this helps you get started. Uh, like I said, I'll leave links uh, for uh, getting started in data logging and uh, any other projects that I have going on. So I hope everyone has a happy day and God bless.